Welcome to a new vlog, the series that will touch both your passion for electronics and your bank account at the same time. And we're gonna start with this multimeter thermocouple which I got from eBay. It's brown, it looks familiar for those who have a Fluke multimeter. And yes, it's a branded Fluke. However, I got this uh, from eBay for just a couple of dollars delivered from China. So it might as well be fake, but honestly, uh, who cares, it's uh, just a thermocouple, it's gonna work just fine even if it's a fake one. The thing is I got my Fluke 87 uh, as a used unit without original packaging, so it was uh, missing the thermocouple, but now I got it and uh, I can plug this in and measure temperature as well with my Fluke 87.5. This video is sponsored by JLCPCB.com who in the past months upgraded their manufacturing line so they are now offering 24 hours turnaround time for prototype PCBs for the same price of just $2. Prototyping is now faster and cheaper than any other place so it's definitely worth checking them out. Next I ordered a set of these CR2032 battery sockets. They looked pretty interesting, I never saw something like uh, this before. So each socket can hold uh, two coin cells. Uh, they will be connected in series, but you also get this uh, on-off switch at the top of the enclosure. I never used the CR2032 batteries in series because usually I think at coin cell batteries as a power source for low power circuits, which would run just fine on 3 volts. You wouldn't need to use two in series so I'm guessing these were designed quite a few years ago uh, and maybe they were used for some kind of small toy. My next item are actually these two tape cassettes for my uh, label printer. Uh, this is made by KZ Tape and you'll find these on eBay and AliExpress in a variety of sizes and colors. I got this black on white and uh, this one is red on white tape. I will probably uh, mostly be using this uh, black on white tape for labeling stuff here in the Vodlog lab. This is way cheaper than getting the genuine uh, brother tapes, but I'll have to see if they are of similar quality. Some viewers suggested these on previous videos, so I thought I'd uh, give them a try. I also ordered a uh, cassette with heat shrink tubing. I'm not really sure if my uh, small label printer can uh, do those heat shrink tubes, but we'll see when I get it because it would be pretty cool to have labeled heat shrink wires. Next up I have a couple of uh, thermal cutoff switches. These are rated for 250 volts 10 amps. You can see they have these uh, thick spade connectors for carrying all that current and they are normally connected ones and rated for 85 degrees Celsius. So when the temperature reaches 85, these will cut off the connection. They are great for thermal protection of equipment and I got them for my spot welder project. I think I will be attaching one of these to the microwave um, oven transformer to protect it from overheating. But honestly, I don't use that transformer uh, very often and when I use it, it's only for a few minutes for building a small battery pack. So it would have been fine even without such a protection. However, it's generally good practice to add these uh, protection elements when you're building a project. A few episodes back, I showed in a mailbag that I got the 70 my dash cam and uh, there was the option to get a GPS module as well. And uh, having that uh, GPS uh, module would enable some uh, driver assistance features. Well, this is that GPS module. I ordered it separately from Banggood. They had it on sale. Now, I'm not particularly interested in using those uh, driver assistance uh, features because uh, from what I've been seeing on YouTube videos, they're not particularly useful because they kind of react slow to the uh, traffic. But the GPS module was on sale and I thought I'd give it a try out of curiosity. As always, you'll find links in the description below the video for all of the items shown here. And the point of this uh, GPS module is that it attaches on the back of the camera and connects via these uh, pogo pins. Next, I have a tube of uh, transparent silicone adhesive. This is a uh, model K705 
from this brand. I'm not even going to try to pronounce that, but you'll find this stuff on AliExpress. And I wanted to have some kind of silicon adhesive that I could use for electronics, and this seems to have that recommendation in the product specs. So I plan to use this from stopping components from flapping around in the breeze or to attach thermocouples or thermistors to various heat sinks and parts. So the adhesive must be non-conductive, heat resistant, must have good adhesion and must not decompose over extended periods of time or become conductive. We all know the brown adhesive that was used in older equipment on PCBs that became conductive over the years sending a otherwise fully functional product to the dumpster. So let's give this a quick try and see if it will harden by the end of this video and is uh, somewhat more liquid than the uh, typical uh, silicon adhesive that you get at the hardware store. But that's a good thing if you want this um, getting into tight spaces. Next up I have a set of two beefy parts and whenever I see these uh, TO3P package styles the word beefy comes into mind. These are BCR 30 AM uh, 30 amps 600 volts triacs. I first uh, saw these in the Sanko 737G spot welder review and teardown video. If you haven't seen that one, I will link it on screen right now. I think it was someone in the comments who said that the triac failed on his unit. So I decided to order a couple of spares just in case. So here they are. Not sure if these are genuine or not. They look like they have the Mitsubishi logo. I'm not even sure if these are so popular to be worth copying, but I'm not going to investigate this. I'll just pop one in when it happens and see if it does the job or not. And if it doesn't work, I'll just find a replacement with similar specs. Next up, I have a uh, small 1.3 inch 240 by 240 pixels IPS TFT display, which is based on the ST7789 controller. So IPS is a technology that is supposed to have some advantages over the older TN panels by providing better viewing angles as well as better color reproduction. So I thought we could uh, check out the quality of this uh, 1.3 inch uh, display and the plan here was to pause the video, go to the computer and uh, try to load some bitmap images on this from a controller board, something like an ESP8266 board. But unfortunately I realized that by looking at the pinout of this display, it seems that they've broken out the I2C interface instead of the SPI interface for this display. So not really sure why they did that. If you have a 20, 240 by 240 pixels IPS display, it's likely that you'll want to load some bitmaps. And I don't think you want to do that over I2C. So it, the demo I was planning is not going to happen. I'm not even sure if the libraries that exist support I2C interface uh, for this uh, controller chipset. So I'm gonna abandon the demo for this uh, display. And uh, unfortunately, even using it in the project is not really recommended for this breakout board. I mean, you do have all 12 pins on the ribbon here, so you could break out uh, the signals that are missing, but why didn't they just break out all 12 connections to a pin header? It would have been really easy. There, there is plenty of room on this uh, PCB to do that. Next up, I have three small modules for the I2C SI 7021 temperature slash humidity sensor. And the story here is that I needed a couple of these. And if I were to order them from Farnell, for example, I would end up paying uh, way more than getting these ready assembled modules from AliExpress. These will be used in a project that I'm working on to add humidity temperature sensing capability to the circuit. These are nice accurate sensors. They come assembled on a small module. They have the uh, bypass caps, uh, the 3.3 volt uh, regulator and MOSFETs for level translation. It's unbelievable that they can sell these for $2 shipped a piece. Next up, a product that probably looks uh, familiar to a lot of my viewers if they've ever been inside a modern smartphone. These are adhesive strips for the battery. 
Now the story might seem familiar, you are the guy who tinkers with electronics, you're not afraid to take things apart and repair them occasionally, so it's only natural that family members and friends will come to you for a repair instead of going to the repair shop because, well, it's free and your time is not as valuable as theirs. So I sometimes end up doing these uh, battery swaps and I need these adhesive strips for the new battery. It's much cheaper to get a set of these from AliExpress than it is to order them from the local shop where they cost about 10 times as much. Next I got a set of these uh, dust filters for cooling fans and honestly I thought they are going to be a finer mesh because uh, uh, these are only going to stop big clumps of dust but the finer stuff is gonna get through and I was thinking of using these on the desktop editing machine that I built a few months back to minimize the dust collection inside. I think I could install maybe two of these back to back to kind of get a finer mesh but let me know in the comments what are you guys using on your desktop machines to filter out the dust. My next item is intended to be installed on a uh, motorcycle helmet to increase the visibility of the rider and maybe the wank factor as well. I am not a uh, motorcycle rider but I was curious how this thing uh, works um, and how it looks because in the presentation photos it was uh, very nice so I ordered a set. It should be white color and this is basically some form of uh, EL strip with the uh, required uh, battery and high voltage uh, power supply to drive it. So let's connect this, let's put some batteries in and see how it looks when it's powered on. So as expected these are not very bright, um, basically what you would expect from an EL panel. So I had to turn most of the lights uh, here to have these uh, show up on uh, camera. So yeah, this could increase the visibility, but I'm not sure if it would be more effective than some reflective tape because this will not put out that much light to make it visible from a long distance, but reflective tape on the other hand would be visible from as far as the approaching headlights can shine. But anyway, if you think this is cool or you might use it for some other purpose, there will be links in the description below the video. Regarding the controller, you do have a few modes. So this is rapid blinking, always on, slow blinking and back to rapid blinking. We have three operating modes and you can also turn it off. And the last item in today's video is this nice set of heat shrink tubing. It contains 270 pieces in six different sizes, two colors, red and black. And if we look closely, there are no markings on uh, this tubing, which I generally take as a sign of lower quality, lower cost, because if you remove the process of marking the tube during production, I, I would imagine that is for cost saving, uh, but for general purpose, it should be good enough to use this. I've always purchased my heat shrink individually in the widths and lengths that I needed it, but I have to admit that having these uh, kits is useful, especially for doing a remote job like going to a friend's house to wire or repair something or working on your car. It's much easier to grab this compact kit and now you're going to have something at least close to what you need in this kit. Then this is much easier than it is to grab your big box of heat shrink tubing and take it with you. That was all for today. I hope you found something interested in this video and I would really appreciate if you would hit the like button. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next week.